I'm tired, so don't talk to me. The person screaming at me is the person I used to treasure, who I swore my internal love for and in front of God. Where did I go wrong? Many aimless days passed me by as I wondered that. When I checked my wallet, at the peak of my despair, all I had inside was five dollars. What could I do with this little money? Feeling pulled by the noise I heard at that moment, I began to run. My name is Julia. I'm 29 years old. My dad passed away long before I can remember. My mom never wanted to talk about him, so I only know my father as the man who smiles up at me from old photos. My mom is a kind person and had to raise me all on her own, so I'm sure it was tough on her. But she never cried or complained in front of me. She always had a smile on her face. I love you so, so much. I'm so grateful you were born. Maybe it's because I was raised, showered with love. I grew up unguarded and open to talk to anyone. It got to the point that people warned me that I need to be more careful and learn how to defend myself. The main reason people said that to me is that I love traveling. I always saved up my salary from my part-time job to go on solo trips when I had free time. I was so used to traveling on my own that by the time I had reached my late twenties, anywhere I'd go, I'd end up drinking with the locals. I met my husband Stuart while traveling. That day, I was eating at a restaurant bar as usual. Since I was eating alone, the restaurant manager was kindly sharing all sorts of funny stories about the area with me. Stuart was sitting nearby, and he also seemed to be alone, so he naturally ended up joining our conversation. Usually, those sorts of chance meeting end as soon as I'd leave the restaurant. But since Stuart and I were both enjoyed traveling, we added each other on social media. It turns out we lived closer to each other than expected, so we began meeting regularly and ended up getting married. That's not to say that the road to our marriage was a smooth one. So you're Julia. My father-in-law to be. Said that with a sharp, judgmental look in his eyes. Yes, he obviously wanted to reject our marriage. Dear, if you make a face like that, you're going to scare her. A steward's mother came to my rescue, maybe because I was anxiously looking at the ground. That's right, Dad. I've already decided that I will be marrying Julia. I found out once we began dating. But Stewart's family runs a large company. I'm not complaining or anything. Stewart's father didn't seem to plan to force him into a marriage, but he wanted a family-oriented daughter-in-law. That's why, once Stewart turned 25, his father constantly brought him to gatherings where he thought his son could find a good girl. Stewart was pretty good-looking, so he had loads of women chasing after him. But according to him, those women didn't like him for who he really was. He felt like they just liked him because he's the son of a CEO. Around that time, he met me while traveling. Stewart's father understood how Stewart felt and supported him, but he didn't expect someone who was raised by a single parent like me to appear. Stewart is kind and a bit of a softy, but once he decides something, he becomes stubborn and doesn't change his mind. Julia, Stuart is going to take over the company one day. Are you prepared to support him when that happens? I hesitated for a moment, but then firmly looked my father-in-law in the eyes and said, "Yes." However, seeing how my mother-in-law had been taking care of my father-in-law all these years, I worried that my father-in-law's definition of support is different from mine. Okay, then. When are you going to quit your job? Huh? You just said you would support Stuart, right? If you're working, you'll end up using your job as an excuse to not keep the house in shape. And having a job outside of the house like that will just make you full of yourself. Then you'll end up forcing your husband to help around the house. Do you really want to be a useless wife like that? Um, I planned to keep working until I have kids. What? My father-in-law's expression changed, and Stuart 
let out a sigh. We have to sort things out with the company first, so let's decide this all later. I felt a tingling in the air. Maybe it was because Stuart had spoken out so strongly. Afterwards, we ate dinner that Stuart's mom had cooked. That was so delicious. It was as if a professional had cooked it. And then we went home. As we were on our way home, the conversation came up again. About working, do you really think it won't affect things at home? Didn't I tell you before we got engaged that I want to continue working until we have kids? Yeah, and that's fine and all. But I just wanted to say that, like my dad said earlier, since you selfishly decided this yourself, don't let it affect me. Well, it seems like you've prepared yourself for it. Feeling a bit uncomfortable, I answered. Of course. If I had answered differently then, maybe I'd be living a different life now. We officially got married. Following my father-in-law's wishes, we had a grand wedding. My friend said to me, This is amazing, but this isn't very you. But it's beautiful. Afterwards, my daily life was so hectic that I barely remember anything from it. I would wake up early to make breakfast and lunch for Stuart. Stuart likes his breakfast to be with eggs, like an eggs benedict, for example, and his lunch to be homemade. He wanted his dinner to have multiple courses. My mother-in-law would sometimes check the lunch boxes I had prepared for my husband, and even critique them sometimes. Julia, it's not very well balanced, is it? She spoke kindly, but she'd call me to say that about once a week. At first, I thought that my mother-in-law was calling after she'd coincidentally see Stuart's lunch when visiting him at work. But I found out that my father-in-law always wanted his lunch to be freshly made and still warm, so she'd come to deliver his lunch daily and purposefully checked on what I gave Stuart. But I didn't want to quit my job. My mom taught me that if I quit my job, I have less options if something goes wrong. She always told me to not let a job go, especially if I like it. So I slaved away every day. I tried to relieve myself from some work around the house by getting convenient appliances or paying for help. But Stuart said, You're just being lazy. If you can't handle this, quit your job. So I couldn't do any of that. By the time I finished all the housework and went to sleep every day, it was always around 1 a.m. One day, a meeting at work ended up finished later than planned. I knew it would be impossible for me to prepare all the food Stuart expects on the table by the time he comes home, so I bought a ready-made soup from the deli counter at the grocery store on the way home. I got home, prepared other things, and then warmed up the soup. By the time Stuart had got home and taken a shower, I had prepared two side dishes, grilled some fish as a main course, and warmed up the soup. It was from the grocery store deli, not from a can or anything like that. I was sure it'd be okay, but part of me was worried as we sat down to eat. Julia, you broke your promise. Huh? You bought this soup from somewhere, didn't you? I bought it, but I added in cream and fixed it up a bit. Yeah, but the taste is definitely of something store-bought. I told you I like homemade food, but you don't have time to even make soup? At the moment, Stuart's voice sounded kind, so I misunderstood his question as him caring about me. I had emotionally and physically reached my limit. I began to reveal how hard I felt my life was and how little time I had. I've reached my limit. I barely have time to sleep. Not that I hate housework or don't want to do it, but I just don't have time. But my work is important to me. I wanted to completely express my feelings to Stuart. Okay, I see. About 15 minutes had passed. Stuart said that and nodded, and I looked at him with a relieved smile. You really understand how I feel? Then in that case... The problem will be solved once you quit your job, right? Huh? What? So quit. If you have more time, you won't have to break your promises to me. You don't want to waste time crying like this, do you? 
me expressing my feeling was a waste of time to him. That was the first time I felt real despair. Stuart was convinced all I had to do was quit my job. I realized he didn't care about my feelings at all. I... I get it. I'm sorry for saying weird things, I'm just tired. Forget what I said, I won't quit my job. I made a mistake. I thought the soup would be fine since it wasn't from a can. I'll make it myself next time. I tried getting to Stuart's heart that way, but he wouldn't change his mind. Stuart is the type to clam up if he gets mad. I ignored that he had told me to quit my job, but it seems he told his parents because they began to tell me to do the same. Eventually, I couldn't take it anymore and I quit. I thought that afterwards, if I just did well around the house, our relationship would improve. But our relationship just got even more rocky. What's with this food? What are you doing? I'm sorry. Shouldn't things be better now that you quit your job? Why are you trying to make me mad like this? No, that's not- Those who don't work shouldn't eat. You aren't useful, so you don't deserve anything. That night, when he got angry at what I cooked, he told me to give him my debit card for our bank account. Why? You are useless, so if I give you access to our money like this, you'll probably just waste it. His logic made absolutely no sense, but since I had quit my job, the only people I ever got in contact with were him and his parents, so my willpower had weakened. I thought I was a useless person who just causes trouble for everyone around me. I used to be better. I began to feel like the harder I worked, the more useless I was becoming. No matter what I do, it's for nothing because I have no value as a person. I even began thinking things like that. Stuart told me I could only buy things online and he would double check before I made any purchase. Shopping became something I did with a feeling of urgency. One day I noticed I had run out of makeup, so I asked Stuart if I could buy some more. Excuse me, don't ask for useless things like that. Maybe I had asked him at the wrong moment because he angrily replied that way. I'm sorry. I'm tired, so don't talk to me. He then took away my access to the card I used to shop online. He ignored me and all I said for the next three months. I didn't want to risk getting him angry by talking to him, so when Stuart was at work, I used my personal savings to buy us food. But of course, that money ran out eventually. When I checked my wallet at the peak of my despair, all I had was $5 inside. What could I do with this little money? At that moment, I heard the sound of the train from outside my window. Taking that money, I began to run to the station. With $5, I could go back home. When I made it back, I rang the doorbell. No one opened the door. At this time of the day, my mom was usually at work. I collapsed on the spot. Julia! As soon as she saw me, my mother rushed over. When I told her everything that had happened, my mom cried with me. Talking to someone about your problems really can help you feel better. The severity of my situation finally hit me. Why didn't I realize this before? At that moment, my phone rang. Hey, you haven't prepared dinner. Where are you? Get home immediately. Stuart's voice exploded into the phone speaker. My mom took my phone from my hand. My daughter passed away. Huh? Julia isn't coming back. Mother-in-law? You ignored her for the past three months, forced her to quit her job, and wouldn't give her any money to use for your daily needs, right? That's the equivalent of her being dead to you, isn't it? No, that's not- A person needs money to survive. Even little kids understand that much. My mom said that and hung up the phone. Of course, I wanted to get a divorce, but just that wasn't enough. But I didn't have any proof of what Stuart had done, so my mom and I prepared for war. Honestly, it's been super exciting. To find clues when Stuart wasn't around, I dug around for bank-related documents to check what's going on with our household money. Looking through the documents with my mom, we realized what was going on. 
Three weeks of preparations later, my mom and I went to my in-laws' house. Like mother, like daughter. Considering the way you've treated our son after leaving the house empty for the last three weeks, isn't getting a divorce natural? My father-in-law even threatened that he had a lawyer ready. In that case, how about the way you raised your son? My mom snapped back. My mom's face was calm. My father-in-law was used to women like his wife, who always stood quietly behind their husbands, so he looked shocked to be spoken back to that way. Isn't what you said to my husband going too far? Surprisingly, the person who spoke up was Stuart's mother. Oh, someone who can't stand up to her husband or son doesn't have the right to speak up now. The room went silent. My mother-in-law's face went bright red. She wouldn't reply, but her whole body trembled. I promised you I would support Stuart, but Stuart has done nothing to support me or our life together. That's because you're useless. Stuart snickered as he spoke. Yeah, I also assumed it's because I'm useless. But not only have you ignored me for the last three months, but you forced me to pay for everything at home even though I was unemployed. What? My father-in-law was shocked. Wait, what are you talking about? You've been able to buy expensive things even though you're unemployed. Isn't that thanks to Stuart's money? No, that's not true. The last time you called me and told me that I should apologize and return the money, I thought something strange was going on. So, I looked into things. I pulled out documents from my purse. Where did you get these pictures from? The photos showed Stuart acting very friendly with a young woman. There was even one of them entering a hotel together. He probably used the money on her. Among the documents I had prepared was our bank statement, which showed how our savings was decreasing, and photos of Stuart and his lover buying brand name goods together. No way! Stuart, what is this? You lied to me? The recipient of my father-in-law's anger changed from me to Stuart. And in the first place, how could you be selfish enough to not give money to your own wife? My father-in-law was a company manager, so he was strict when it came to money. What could I do when I didn't have money? If I didn't give my girlfriend presents, she'd get in a bad mood. And I only borrowed money from you twice, right? That's basically spare change for you. Hearing that, the color of Stuart's father's face changed. What are you saying? You asked me directly twice, but four other times through your mother. Huh? Stuart and his father's stories were getting confusing. Looking at my mother-in-law, her face that was previously red from anger was now completely white. No way. Did you also lie to me? About that, I think this is the reason. It cost us a pretty penny, but my mom and I didn't just investigate Stuart. We looked into his parents as well. My father-in-law opened up the documents I had handed him with trembling hands and photographs tumbled to the floor. There were photos of my mother-in-law speaking with a young man. In front of them was obviously expensive alcohol and Stuart's mother was giggling like a young girl. My mother-in-law froze, breathless. Stuart was also confused seeing this side of his mother that he didn't know. Stuart's father's face showed he felt like the world was crumbling down around him. Ah, this is the face I wanted to see. That probably wasn't good of me, but now I can finally move forward. That's what I thought. Returning back to what we were saying, divorce and alimony for having an affair. We have recordings of abusive phone calls Julia received from her in-laws so we will also be requesting compensation for emotional shock and damage. All of that is listed here, so please, look this over. My lawyer explained in a quiet voice. The room went silent. The first person to break the silence was my father-in-law, though it didn't take him all that long. Understood. I will follow all of Julia's demands. I will also pay for any fees she had to pay to collect this evidence. Dad? Stuart, 
just sign this. Stewart tried to complain, but his father would not back down. Like that, Stewart signed. In that case, we'll take our leave. I have a copy of all the documents, so I will give you a set. My mom and I got up to leave. Look through those documents carefully. You may have money and social standing, but think about whether you actually have the right to judge other families the way you do. My mom left those final wars with my father-in-law. I'm sorry that this happened after you entrusted us with your daughter. Stuart's father stood up and apologized. Stuart was sulky until the very end. I later found out from my lawyer that Stuart had even stolen money from the family company out of desperation. And when his father found that out, he was chased out of the company. Stuart had no money and no job, so he was abandoned by his lover. If he wanted a woman like that, why did he get with me in the first place? I don't know what he's doing now, but I'm sure he can't afford to play around like he used to. It seems Stuart's parents got divorced. Stuart's father was a controlling man, but he left his wife in charge of the family finances. Thanks to that, she has secretly met more young men than we had thought. When Stuart's father found that out, he chased his wife out of the house as well. Stuart's mother had close to no work experience, so she couldn't stick to any jobs long term and ended up moving in with her relatives. Supposedly, even her relatives would get sick of her and chase her out. This was more than just a simple shock for my father-in-law. News about this spread through the company and even reached their clients. He ended up selling the company and using that money to pay my compensation. He no longer trusts people, so he's moved to the countryside and is living a secluded life. I ended up starting a new job at a travel agency. I used to work as a receptionist at a travel agency, but now I joined the planning department as a trip organizer. I've been focusing on planning trips that will bring smiles to the faces of people who are tired out by life. I want to be able to bring brightness back into people's lives.